What's up, Simon? It's welcome to a bit more technical dev vlog episode this week. I'm actually once again super excited because I got good news, everyone. I recently read in the news um, that there's a new Firebase local emulator suite. There was always a local emulator for Firebase, but it didn't really came with any UI and I don't think a lot of people used it. But now we have a local emulator where we got a local Firestore or real-time database. We can use local functions and immediately see their logs. Uh, we got a local hosting option and this means we can basically work instead of a, with a real connection to Firebase and with perhaps any problems between a production environment and the dev environment, we can now use everything locally, uh, all the data, test all the triggers, run all the functions and that's what I want to explore with you today. Alright, so let's check out the Firebase emulator suite. Um, the first thing to get started is actually um, well described as Firebase in it, but you have to make sure you have Firebase uh, CLI version 8.4.0. So go ahead and run npm install Firebase tools minus G. And of course, I already did that. And you can confirm it by running Firebase dash dash version and this should hopefully print out yes exactly 8.4.0 so definitely make sure you run that before doing anything else now i bootstrapped a project uh using my very own kickoff ionic generator uh, which was kind of great for this use case um so i got a firebase application connected i got a simple login i got a few entities connected to my database and now I want to transform this somehow to use the local Firestore. So let's try uh, to find out how this works. Although my project is already connected uh, with my Firebase configuration and using uh, the app module, uh, the Angular Fire implementation, Jesus, I should put this into new lines. I really don't know why it's not using new lines. Um, maybe I can format it. No, maybe I can format it with prettier. Yeah. So this is not enough to um, use the CLI or the uh, emulator suite. I think we also have to run Firebase in it in our project. It's not always uh, used if you're just using the database, um, but for running the local emulator, I think you still need to use it. So I will just go with whatever, let's say, um, no, the Firestore functions, perhaps also hosting. And let's just use the emulator. Um, I will also use an existing project from, let's pick this one, I think that's it. Uh, what file should be used for Firestore rules? Um, yeah, use that file. <laughs> I'm fine with that, not sure. Uh, index also just let's pick all the defaults um, and also TypeScript I definitely want to use uh, TS lint yeah why not um, yeah install L dependencies I think that's still the general setup of the Firebase in it um, but this time we also selected somewhere here uh, can't see it anymore uh, the emulators um, I think that option wasn't there previously the question for the hosting setup I think I think um, Angular builds this project into the www folder or the dist folder. I'm actually not sure, but uh, I think we can still change this later and I will rewrite URLs to this. And which Firebase emulators do you want to set up? Um, functions, Firestore, hosting, that should be enough for today. Uh, I really don't care about the port. <laughs> Let's stick to whatever is the default for everything in here. <laughs> Um, yeah, I definitely want to have the emulator UI. Which port? Come on, so many questions today. What's going on? Uh, leave empty to use any available port. Would you like? Yeah, download everything. Okay, we are finally done with the setup for this. And we can check out uh, the configuration, the Firebase RC connected to the project. Um, the Firebase JSON now contains information about what our project is using. Firestore also mentions the rules and indexes. I think this is kind of nice to use it locally. I'm not sure if these will actually be just, uh, deployed later on, but we will find out. Um, besides that, where was the initial file? We got hosting. Uh, we will see. Let's run an Ionic build. Uh, 
prod in the background to see where our files are actually built so um, I might eventually host it somewhere but I think it's built to the dist folder we, we might have to check this um, we got the emulator with the port set up here uh, we got the functions folder because that's after the initialize if you mention you also want to use functions um, so a lot of firebase files in our project and let's see how we can now bring up the emulator. Okay, yeah, I mixed it up. So with Ionic, the uh, www folder is the right folder. This is the build folder. Only if you use a blank Angular project, it will build into the dist folder. So um, it looks like we can simply start it with Firebase emulator starts. Uh, at least that's what uh, the documents say you requested. No, it doesn't match your... Well, it's just a warning. Uh, I usually... Uh... Okay, the warning just says we're unable to load your local functions, appears you're written in TypeScript, which must be compiled. Um, so let's simply follow this and cd into our functions, although we uh, haven't really created any functions, but I guess you have to run at least one build in the beginning to use the functions. Is there any functions perhaps? Uh, more problems, perhaps we haven't even installed the dependencies. So let's also comment in this code and no npm install should be fine um perhaps it was just complaining because uh, we haven't actually used any of these packages so now we're fine uh let's go back and let's run our emulator suite once again and this time i expect no errors all right we got a lot of things so we got functions running at this port. Let's check out what's going on. Okay, this looks like we got the logs from our function. Really cool. Uh, we got Firestore running here. Um, a nice local collection. Um, hosting um, not available for whatever reason. Not yet sure why. Actually, it is hosted here. This is my application, the build application. Um, so hosting works as well. Not sure why there is no link in here. Let's now also try to actually uh, use the local Firestore database. So I really want to use this database and I want to see it connected to my application. And I think the only thing we need to change is in our environment to use a different database URL. Actually, I found a way which doesn't involve uh, changing anything inside our environment. Um, so this didn't really work for me. I don't know why because uh, it was just a few days ago, a month ago mentioned as working, but this snippet kind of worked for me. It looks a bit different now. We can go to our app module to the providers array and provide for settings, which can be imported from the Angular Fire Firestore package. Um, and we can check if we're running in production mode and then we will return undefined and otherwise we return this object which points to our local uh, Firebase or Firestore emulator. So definitely use this port number and not 4k which is just the suite. So with that setting in place I can now finally go to my application. I can go to books, add a new book. Uh, my book let's add whatever release date save it and it is written here and now I can check out my emulator suite and I see it is a local document so this is really really cool um, I could now work with everything in my application um, and everything will work completely locally I can change the data here just like I used to on the web and I got some more functionalities like immediately clearing all the data for testing, um, adding more data, um, sorting, everything we're used to from the web version. This is really cool and I think this should now work kind of great. So always in development mode I would have this local database and otherwise I would use the production database. Really cool without any code changes, just um, these few lines. Now let's also try to um, somehow get our locks for um, the Firebase functions. I would really like to call a local cloud function. Like really a local cloud function, not sure, but let's try, give it a try. The good thing when you write some tutorials, um, you always know where to find something. This is a post that I have actually written for uh, uh, the Java Bread block on callable cloud functions. So I will just borrow some of my own code 
Um, yeah, let's just use this function. Uh, I guess it looks kind of the same. So that's a callable cloud function. Uh, is there anything else I have to do? Okay, I somehow need to deploy it. I'm not sure how to uh, deploy it locally, but yeah, well, we will see. And then I also need to call my cloud function. So let's add that code as well somewhere. Okay, I got the code for the cloud function and let's add a simple button uh, with my input and call cloud function in here. So this will basically call from the functions package uh, from Angular Fire functions, a cloud function called my uppercase function. Uh, we will pass my input to it and then we will um, print out or show the little alert once we uh, get the result back from the callable cloud function. The cloud function itself doesn't really do a lot, but let's also add a little lock I am called in here and perhaps also let's also do the data um, because that should contain everything. Now I really don't know how to deploy this function since uh, I uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess I will just deploy it like usually. So Firebase deploy. Uh, what is the command for only functions? Yeah, dash dash only functions. So of course this will deploy to the cloud, but usually you anyway have uh, functions that should run uh, within Firebase. So I think it's fine to deploy them. And then I really think we just need to bring up our emulator and give it a try. And maybe we see the local log of the function then. Okay, I also added another function which uh, listens to changes to the books collection. I will just print out something. So we got a, a real callable cloud function and a little trigger. And after saving this or running my deploy script, I also see in the logs from the emulator that the functions are already initialized. So um, I'm really curious to see if this will automatically work. I really can't imagine it because that would just be, I don't know. I'm smiling because I figured it out. Um, there's actually a little trick that we can apply to our app module, which looks like this. Um, you add a constructor actually to the real app module. Uh, if you're not running in production mode, you can simply call fire functions, use functions emulator and use uh, the URL, which you can always find right here. So function emulator running on that port, use it in here, hit save, and then we're able to see in our application and now also in real time in our log scripts here. So yeah, of course, now I will cover it. Let's make this a bit smaller. This is my test call cloud function. And we see in the local logs, the full log of our cloud function. I think that's, that's really cool. Um, that means I got my local Firestore um, right here. I got the logs of my cloud functions, which I can use locally. Um, and all of this with just a few lines. I just added this snippet for the Firestore and this for our cloud functions. Now everything works. I think what's not working yet is a local authentication. I'm also not sure how they would do it, um, but they also got instant reload, um, security rules. Um, they also got drag and drop JSON upload. Let's also try that one. Okay, looks like they got drag and drop in the real time database. I always get confused about this because I usually only use Firestore and think it's real time, but real time database of course means the old version of the Firebase database. So in the real uh, database, I guess I would be able to somehow drop this, but it's right now not activated. Um, the hosting emulator we've already seen. Um, for some reason, my application is already deployed there. So that's a nice way of testing this. Uh, Real-time database emulator is currently turned off. So uh, I guess it would kind of work the same like the uh, real emulator. But even this uh, Firestore emulator where I can immediately now clear all my data and check in the application, everything's gone again is really powerful and also the lock of my cloud functions in here is as well really powerful. Uh, everything seems to work. Uh, let's try a final example of if my cloud trigger on functions actually works. 
uh, on the um, books collection which I added. So let's add a book one more time. Test, save it. And yes, beginning execution of add to index, a book was added. So this means we can also locally test the triggers that we defined within our cloud functions. Um, both of them worked, the callable cloud function and the add to index. And again, all of this just by changing uh, a few lines in our app module to check if we're running in a local environment or production. So for production, if you make the production build, nothing of this will be used and also um, not anything of this. But in the local development, I could now actually turn off my internet connection. I could go on a plane and I could completely work with this uh, local emulator suite of Firebase tools. All right, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed our quick adventure into the new Firebase local emulator suite, UI tool, whatever you want to call it. I think it's really powerful. It's a great way to build or test especially Firebase code locally. You could also write unit tests. Um, there's also a testing tool for rules, uh, security rules that we haven't even inspected. So really, um, I think they are working in a great direction with this tool and there will be more additions as outlined in their blog post in the future as well. So what are your thoughts on this? Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this new local emulator give it a try. Simply install the tools, make sure you're running on version 8.4.0 and then give it a try. It's a little bit tricky since there's not really a lot of documentation out there, but I hope um, the few steps you've seen in this video will already help you to get started with your applications. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and stay subscribed for more great videos in the future. And then I hope you have a great week of using the new local emulator UI and I will catch you next week like always. So happy coding, Simon.